the bell icon to turn on notifications. So now that we have a clean data set and we know what the difference is between an Excel table and a pivot table, it's time for us to put this data into an Excel table. Now what I've done here is I've saved this clean version of the file as sales analysis clean. So if you want to pick up the course at this point and start out with a clean data set, then you can download this file from the course files folder. If you've simply been working on the sales analysis workbook and you've followed through every single step so far, you should be at this point as well. So how do we put this data into a table? Well, there are a couple of different ways that we can do this, as is always the way in Microsoft. There's always multiple different ways of doing the same thing. The first thing you need to make sure is that you are clicked somewhere within your data. doesn't matter which cell, just anywhere, as long as it's within your data set. Now, if I want to put this into a table, the first method I could use is to go up to the Home tab. And then in the Styles group, I have a drop down here that says Format as Table. And you can see this shows me all of the different table styles. Now, the colors that you're seeing in here, these are determined by whatever theme you're using in Excel. And if we just go off and take a look at the theme that I'm using, we can find that on the Page Layout tab. In the first group just here, if I click Themes, I'm using the Office theme, which is the default for Excel. If I was using one of these other themes, so let's say Gallery, for example, you can see that changes the font that I'm using, but it's also going to change the colors of the table styles in this drop down as well. So if you're looking at this drop down menu and thinking to yourself, well, I have completely different colors. Why is that? It's going to be because of the theme that you're using. So if you want to make sure that it's exactly the same as mine, change your theme to the Office theme. Now, with all that said, let's go back to our format as table drop down. Notice that our table styles are divided down into different groups. We have custom at the top, light, medium, and dark at the bottom. And this is really personal preference. Whichever one of these you choose, it's going to apply that particular style to your data set. So if I was to choose something like this one just here, light gray table, style medium eight, I can say, yes, my table has headers, click on OK, and I get a very dark looking table style. Notice that as soon as I put my data into a table, I now get that table design ribbon. If I decide I don't particularly like this table design, I can simply go to the table styles drop down and switch it for something else. And you'll see as I hover over, I'm getting a live preview as to what each one of these is going to look like. Now notice at the top underneath custom, I have a table style just here. And this is one that I've created for myself. It's a custom table style. And if you have a specific way that you want your table to look, you can create your own table style by clicking new table style at the bottom. Now, I'm not going to get into that now. And because you're not going to have access to the custom table style that I've created, I'm going to choose something that we can all use. So let's go for this one just here, blue table style, medium six and click to apply. So that is the first way that you can apply a table style by clicking the Format as Table dropdown and selecting one of the options. Now I'm going to Control Z just to go back a few steps to our plain data and show you an even quicker way of putting your data into an Excel table. Make sure you're clicked in the data and press the Control T keyboard shortcut. You get this little Create Table dialog box. Yes, my table has headers. Click on OK. And it's basically going to apply the default table style. And of course, if you don't like that formatting, you can choose another style from this drop down. So let's reapply our blue table style medium six. So those are the two methods you can use. Now, once you've converted your data and put it into a table, as I said, you're going to get this additional table design ribbon at the top. Now, from here, we have some table style options and I can toggle these off and on and change the way that my table style looks. So if I deselect header, it's going to remove that header row. Now, that's not particularly useful, so I'm going to put that back on. If I want to add a total row at the bottom, I could toggle that on and it's going to jump me all the way down to the last row. It's going to add a total row and I can see if I expand this column, it's not quite wide enough, it's going to give me the total profit. 
Now, I'm not really interested in that at this stage because we're going to be able to calculate this when we put it in a pivot table. So let's just turn off total row. Control up arrow to jump to the top. Now currently you can see that this table style includes banded rows, which means we have a blue row, then a white row, a blue row, then a white row, so on and so forth. If I want to turn that off, I just need to deselect banded rows and I get something that looks a lot cleaner. And I actually quite like it like this. I can choose to add a specific style to the first column only. And if I scroll across, you can see that it's going to make everything in that first column bold. Don't particularly like that. Let's turn it off. I could do the same for the last column. So it's going to apply some formatting, in this case, bold formatting to the last column only. And if I want to, I can choose to have banded columns, which is going to give me basically something similar to banded rows, except down the columns. Now I'm going to turn that off because I don't particularly want that. And then the final thing we have here is the filter button. If you remember, I said automatically when you apply a table style, you're going to get these drop down filters. And I find these really useful if I quickly want to run a sort on my data or maybe filter the items in this particular column, I can use this drop down filter. But if you don't want them there, if you're not going to do anything like that, you can deselect filter button and it's going to remove them from those column headings. I'm going to keep mine because I do like to use those. Now, the external table data group, we're not going to use in this particular course. So I'm going to skip over that because it's not actually relevant to what we're doing. The next group, the tools group, this is where we can come to create a pivot table. We can remove duplicates from here. We've already done that, but we could do it from here. And we also have a convert to range button. So if you put your data into a table and then you decide that you basically want to take it out of the table and just have it as plain data, if you select convert to range, that's going to remove the table from your data. And then finally, we have the properties group. And all we really have in here is a couple of options, the first one being table name. Now, when you put your data into a table, Excel is automatically going to give that table a generic name. So you'll probably see something up here that says table one, table two, table three, something like that. Now you can keep those table names, but I would advise you to give your table a meaningful name because that makes it a lot easier for you to identify this particular set of data. If you can imagine if you have a workbook that has maybe 20 sheets and they all have Excel tables on them, if you want to quickly jump between your tables or maybe use your table data in a formula, when your tables are named just one, two, three, four, it's very difficult to know which one you're referencing. So I always like to give my table a meaningful name. So I'm going to call this sales underscore data. Now it's worth noting here when you're naming your tables, you can't have any spaces in the name. So you need to separate words with an underscore or make them all one word. Remember to hit the enter key so that that table name sets. And then underneath that, we have a resize table option. Now, I don't need to do any resizing just here. I am happy with the way that it looks. So now that I have my data in an Excel table, I have it formatted as I like it, and I've given my table a meaningful name. Finally, we finish preparing our data ready for analysis with a pivot table. And that's exactly what we're going to get onto in the next section. If you're not a subscriber, click down below to subscribe so you get notified about similar videos we upload. To see the full course that this video came from, click over there. And click over there to see more videos from Simon Says It.